Well, take two on the episode. We are actually in person this time, uh, rather than over. Rather I can than touch him over the interwebs. A little morning devotion. Read a a scripture, and then conversate about it. By the way, it's early. It's early morning. Mm-hmm. Boy, it's. I mean, I've been up for a couple hours, but it's barely light. Barely light. So, if you see me yawn, or if I happen to fall asleep, just carry on. I'll be back. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. We talked about Pawpaw. Yeah. Talked about the faith that, that he showed, but also just what... You, I mean, you can start all the way back... Been it's been your whole life, my whole life, of making making decisions where we end up having to walk by faith. Yeah, and what that's like. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was raised by a, a fantastic man, uh, a man of just simple but incredibly strong faith. Right. Um. All my dad needed for assurance was that he felt like the Lord told him to do something. Mm -hmm. And um, if he felt like the Lord was directing him to do it, that's that's all he needed. And so there were many times uh, where he just stepped out and did things that some folks would, would consider unwise. Um, and I really, I mean, some of them, sometimes you could really make a strong case for it being unwise, uh, certainly not what you would counsel someone to do. And yet it was what he felt like God right. told him to do. And lo and behold, it worked and, and worked mm-hmm. miraculously at times. But I mean, when you think about the stories of heroes of faith through the scripture, they often did things that, that didn't make sense. And so by, by normal logic, by by even sound logic, right? They just sometimes don't don't work. Yet they do. Uh, that's not, to, I think, in any way to encourage stupidity or foolishness. It was purely in a sense where my dad felt like the Lord told him to. Now, if he didn't feel like the Lord told him to, yeah, he didn't care who was trying to get him to do what. He wasn't about to do it because the one thing that mattered the most to that man was that he pleased the Lord and that he did what he felt like God wanted to do. So I saw him, uh, I mean, I was very young when, when this chapter of dad's life where he was really stepping out in faith and doing things for God um, started. I was three years old when he founded the first uh, church there, the, which apostolic church of Fort Worth. I think it was actually called apostolic church of Jesus Christ back in those days and then became um, Apostolic Church of Fort Worth, I think, and then Cornerstone Church eventually. But um, the 1980, when he started, he started because he was he was feeling this unction uh, to to start up a church, and he was standing praying, and he kept looking out the window of our house across a, a vacant field to a little old building that had was an abandoned firehouse. Um, had been abandoned for several years, um, still owned by by the city, but wasn't being used for anything other than some things stored in it. Hmm. And he kept looking at it, and he said the Lord would just tell him there's a good place to start. And uh, he had no money. He had no backing. Um, in fact, due to some different circumstances, he had to step out even away from the congregation he had been a part of without even their support. So he was completely on his own uh, starting, which is not – the best way to do it but it's the way it was and uh kept looking saying there's a great place to start but he didn't have any money he didn't have anybody backing him so he just went and and said uh i'm gonna go talk to the people about this and see if i can get this building and so (laughs) he went down and talked to him and he basically told him say here here's the deal i want to use your building and i ain't got a dime uh (laughs) no, no money to give you but here's what i can do and this is the way he would tell a story he would say you see these hands Mm. (laughs) he would say uh they they can do anything they're set out right. to do. And he offered to 
fix up the building. I'll do work on the building. I'll repair because it was just kind of beginning to deteriorate. And, and if I could use the building. And so he used that building for three years free of rent um, to start a church. It ended up packing it out, uh, com, you know, to over capacity right. within three years. And uh, then the congregation purchased a building in another part of Fort Worth and moved over. And then uh, this, the, the walk of faith continued when it was time to build a new building after purchasing the first one in the Sun Valley Southeast mm -hmm. uh, area of Fort Worth. Uh, then they needed to build and there was no money there for it, but he f felt like the Lord had told him to do it and to do it debt free. Mm -hmm. um, and so he began to put the vision out there to talk. Uh, miraculous donations started coming in and uh, the whole thing was built a stage at a time and every time we would get to a new stage the money would just miraculously appear and probably the most astounding thing that happened through that time was when it was time to order the pews for that building and they had managed to build the building debt free to that point mm. um, and he it was time to order those pews and they didn't have any money <laughs> and it was $26,000 for the pews and this is back in the mid 1990s wow. so he 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 said the lord told him to go ahead and order them without any money <laughs> like i said this is not it's not in your finance class <laughs> right. and so and i'm not even saying you you should do it it's just right. what he did out of faith and he said god told me to order those and the money will be here and uh, he ordered them and as i remember the story i was a teenager at the time but as i remember the story uh, it was the day that the uh, money was due to be paid for those pews that uh, the money miraculously again came in through a donation and he paid for those pews. Um, but it was just that kind of faith that just would step out and say, if God, the, the faith that he had for healing and for miracles. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was a kid, I had a bunch of warts on my hands. <laughs> which doesn't sound like a big deal to a lot of people, but to a young kid, it was a big deal. Kids right. would kind of, you know, not make fun so much, but they would, mm -hmm. they'd be like, oh, don't touch me, you know, that sort of thing. And I had six warts on this finger, five on the other. And uh, I remember exactly how many, because they bothered me that much. And they would sometimes hurt, sometimes get dry, you know, kind of bleed. And uh, they were having a prayer line for healing. And so I went up for healing and my dad prayed for me and, uh, he prayed for me that God would heal. And then he said to me, don't even worry about it. Don't look at these anymore. Forget about them. Forget they're there. They're going to be gone. Uh, mm. Just don't, don't look at them. Don't worry about it. That was uh, that night at church. The next day I was doing my schoolwork and uh, looked down and I just happened because I had done, as he said, I just tried to forget about them. And when I looked down, I was writing, writing my, uh, on my book, my finger was as smooth as it is right, right. now. And I thought, Whoa! And then I pulled up my other my other finger just as smooth, just like they are right now. And what faith that built in me as a child, right. uh, just from a man who had the kind of faith to to be sincere before the Lord. And when he heard the Lord's voice, or when the the Lord impressed him and spoke to him, he just believed it, and yeah. he was willing to act on what he believed. He believed it that much, you know. Right. It's one thing to say you believe something; it's another thing to believe it enough to actually. Yeah. Act on it. Well, it sure would be nice if the Lord would uh would spell out step by step, you know, ten years, fifteen yeah, years, right. yeah, and, or give you uh the assurance that it would work. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times, what you get is, you know, <laughs> like we mentioned the other day, Abraham, go find a city. Yeah, and. And a lot of times it's... it's His builder and maker is God. Right. And a lot of times it's instructions of that, or it's telling Noah to build an ark when he hasn't seen rain in his life. Yeah, right. And and so I think that a lot of times what, you're, what we're called to, a lot of times is bigger, bigger than ourself. Mm. And it's, it's obvious that it's... Sh probably through our own strength should fail mm -hmm. and, and would fail and would fail. Yeah. And so, definitely. uh, yeah, God calls us to, well, well, I think that if, if we're not reaching a point where what we're doing would fail without God's help, we're not doing nearly enough. Right. You know, Peter, get out of the boat. Uh, 
stepping out in the water. These kinds of acts of faith um, should kind of make us a little nervous. Uh, right. Otherwise, we're not really doing anything beyond our own ability. And I think God's called us to do much more than what's beyond our own ability. Um, and so are you willing, am I willing, uh, to, to just step into what God calls us to? I, I think we need to really think about the importance of sincerely seeking the Lord uh, to be, you know, as sure as you can be that you are taking the next right step. But yeah. walking with the Lord becomes a whole bunch of doing the next right thing. Because like you said, God doesn't give us this plan where we know what's coming. And I I, I would like to have a detailed map. You know, right. I'd like to know a landmine here, avoid, right. uh, oh, here's a scenic overlook. You're going to be able to rest, enjoy this. Right. Um, and we don't often have that. Um, well, so you're just asking, you know, to be a sojourner, to just go and to walk in faith, uh, step by step. And it can sometimes scare the tarnation out of you. I remember you were telling, talking about, um, I guess we were in Jennings, Louisiana, when you were praying for direction and God told you something pretty straight, pretty, like pretty straightforward, but it, but it is so true. Uh, you, Go yeah, you, you I was asking the Lord to order my steps that mm -hmm. we were referring to. Yeah, so I was uh, praying through even this this passage that you Probably started with, and and then also looking at the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and and how that a man uh, uh, makes his plans, but the Lord ordains his you know his, his future. And so I was looking at all these passages, and I was saying, God, you know, I need you to order my steps. Like, uh, I I want a step, but I, I I need you to to lay this right. out for me. And the the Lord impressed me so strongly that I'll order your steps as soon as you start taking them. Right. And, and so I thought, well, what do you mean as soon as I start taking them? And then I focused on, oh, I've been wanting to know like the sequence of steps. I don't know the sequence of steps, mm -hmm. but I do know the next step. Right. And the next step for me then was simple. And that was... Uh, prayer and taking a trip to some different towns that had been on my heart and just trying to get a feel for what God was doing. And, and so when that's all I could do next, cause I didn't really right. know beyond that, what would happen. Um, cause so much of it's just, there's so many dynamics that come into play because God's work is done amongst people and amongst a culture where, uh, it's not only your actions, but other people's actions and all this stuff, all the dynamics you have to work with it. So I said, okay, God, I will make a commitment and I'll do the next thing. And through that same process, there was a, uh, uh, a guy that I, I like to hear teach a lot. I won't call names here on the episodes, but a teacher that I looked up to, I heard him say that uh, talking about direction. And he said that you need to be, give God some movement. And he used the old phrase. It wasn't original to him, but the phrase he used, and it was the first time I'd heard it was that you can't steer a parked car. So the point of that being, obviously, as a kid, you know, I've mm -hmm. gotten into a car and tried to steer the wheel. Well, you're not going to go left or right if it's not going forward. But once you get momentum, then you can get direction. And oftentimes, I think it may come in that order while we're waiting on direction. Um, and, and let me say, I do think we have direction right. as far as, you know, the general direction or even the end goal. Like, we know this is what... God is calling us to do. So say, I don't know, I don't know what your people who are watching this episode, what you may be dealing with, but maybe God's calling you to start a, a, something entrepreneurially, some kind of business. And you don't really know the details of what God wants, but you feel this calling uh, to start some kind of business or ministry that meets a certain need. And God's impressing you to do that. So you have direction in that sense, but the actual specifics of following out that plan uh, become kind of lost, like like what what all's going to happen? I'm scared of what may happen a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. I think the challenge is to say, 
well, I know where God's taking me, but I don't know what path he will use to get me there. What right. steps will be a part of this process? And I'm willing to just start stepping, realizing that sometimes I'm going to step in stuff. And sometimes right. I'm going to have to step around stuff. Sometimes it's going to look like failure. Sometimes it's going to look like success. And it's going to be a mixed bag of all things work together for good. And God's going to move me forward step by step right. where I need to be. So I want direction. But am I willing to give God momentum in that direction and yeah. to take the steps I can take? Because I think I ask myself, what's the next best thing? Like, right. What's the next right thing I can do? And I don't have to have the next 10 things lined out for me. Right. Just give me the next thing and I will be obedient and I will do it. And I will let the chips fall where they may and I will let the results happen even when they look great, like, oh, that really worked, or it looks like, boy, that was a disaster. Uh, and you learn through those times, and, and sometimes character is built, and God uses all of it together to, to make it happen. I'll bet that when Moses was told to go to Egypt to uh, save God's people, I, I bet he didn't expect to be at the Red Sea with an army charging behind him. <laughs> no. Uh, but had he seen all that, he probably would have yeah, said, I'm exactly. good. <laughs> exactly. And and so there there are lots of I wonder if I do I actually do believe. Well um we ask God to show us the roadmap. We ask God to show us the plan. I believe a lot of times he won't show us the plan because if we knew what we're gonna have to endure or what we're gonna have to go through to get there we might say, hey, hey, I don't want to be any part of that. Yeah. But but we're looking at that from from this point of view. But if you are living a life of surrender, constant um, trusting in God, when you're in that moment, you're going to withstand that moment. Um, like, for instance, um, think of Paul. Before Paul was called to... Uh, it's in Acts nine. He gets hit by the by the light, <laughs> blinded. I want to sing the song every time, blinded by the light. But he gets knocked off of his horse, and um, and Ananias is told to go pray for uh, Paul uh, because. And I think the the way that the verse is worded. He says, for there are uh, many things that he must suffer for my name. And that to me, whenever I read that, I think, well, that don't sound like a good deal. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, like God's call includes many things that Paul must suffer. Uh, and so I do think there are a lot of times where there are, I mean, there are things that God has ordained and planned in our future. That if we knew what was coming, we would either try to do it our own our own way, try to take it into our own hands, or we would try to uh, avoid it. Yeah. And so. Uh, yeah, I think there are also there are some things that um, are constant as far as being the will of God. Right. Um, that doing those things opens up the more specific parts of the will of God. What I'm meaning is prayer, time in the Word of God, mm -hmm. and the commission of sharing the gospel. These we are called to do regardless of right. in what way. So when we're talking in terms of uh, uh, doing something for God, maybe launching out and, and doing whatever kind of work He's calling you to do, as we're all called to do, that's not just for pastors. That's right. for every believer. I mean, it might be an, just a a Bible study in your neighborhood that God would lead you to do, or it might be, um, you know, getting some kind of group together for single moms or, you know, mothers who are struggling, or it might be whatever. It might right. be an addiction recovery kind of ministry, whatever way God's using you. But while you're looking for the way to step into that and do that, there are things that are constants yeah. uh, in the will of God that are actions, right? So prayer, uh, worship, devotion, uh, sharing the gospel. So rather than waiting for the right thing to open and then I'm going to begin to share the gospel, 
I think when we become action-oriented people that are always fulfilling the commission of Christ, right. somehow the opportunities seem to kind of open up. One of my greatest uh, definitions, my favorite definitions I've heard for luck, <laughs> as people <laughs> call it, is when preparation meets right. opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so when we find ourselves in a place of not knowing what door is going to open up, I've been there, uh, and I'm, I'm there, actually. Right. I'm, I'm walking in that place now. Uh, and doors have opened up, and I'm doing things as God brings them to me. But when you're in that position uh, of of kind of waiting on the Lord, uh, first of all, waiting is not inactivity. Right. Isaiah 40, they that wait when upon the Lord walk. shall what? They, they will shall walk. Re they will renew their strength, and they will walk, walk which run. is action, and not they will run right. and not faint, and they will mount up on, on wings. wings as eagles. So you've got walk, run, soar. Right. Uh, all of those things are movement. So waiting on the Lord doesn't mean I, I'm just going to sit here and do nothing until right. God mm, somehow drops something in my lap. What it means is, is I always have things as a believer to be doing yeah. faithfully before the Lord. And then whatever opportunities come to me. So back to that definition of luck, because some folks will look at people who've done, you know, what they see to be great things for God. And they're all, right. what a luck, you know, they knew the right people or they had such luck. Uh, no, I mean, may, yeah, maybe, but it's when preparation meets opportunity, because if you weren't prepared, then even if the opportunity right. came, you can't take advantage of it. So what opportunities is God going to open up in my life? And this isn't just about doing ministry specifically as far as church ministry. It's also business ministry because we're in right. ministry and business and in life, not just in the church. And the opportunities that come, we can look around and say, man, that guy sure struck it lucky. Well, what happened was he had opportunity. Yeah. And it is true that different opportunities come to different people. Mm -hmm. But had he not been prepared, right. he could have never taken advantage of the opportunity. So what I'm getting at is in the waiting, mm -hmm. in the time of God, what's coming, what's going, it's a time of preparation. We're yeah. always in a time of preparation. Yeah, We're always in a time of practice. We're always in a time of doing the things right. God's called us to do while he unfolds the the plan that he has. I think a lot of times we get hung up. There's two, two uh, I, I would say two types of revelation, which this is not... Uh, it's not a new idea, but there's we have the general revelation which we find in scripture, and then we have specific revelation. Um, and I think some people, I, I don't want to step on anybody's theological toes, but probably most of the time I'm going to step on people's theological toes. But the um, I got my feet underneath me. <laughs> but you know, so there's there's times where we have what's revealed to us as God's will. But then I think there are specific times where God reveals uh, uh, specifics. So, for instance, I know for I know always it's God's will. You don't, for instance, you don't have to be sitting if you if you're sitting in a restaurant and you see a person walk in and you ask the question, "Lord, is it your will for me to share the gospel with him?" You don't have to ask that thing. You don't have to ask that. That's not a prayer you have to pray. That is written. It that, is. It's yes. God's will because yeah. you're to go and make disciples, or we're to proclaim the gospel of Jesus everywhere we go. So. Yeah, it's not you don't have to you don't have to ask is it his will. But for instance, I do think there are times like yeah, it's God's will you share the gospel, but it might be God's will that you move your family to a location specifically where there's a lot of need. And those are things that come in as specific directions. Um mm -hmm. like when you think about Paul when he begins his missionary journeys, he's beginning with the simple fact of the matter is we're called to preach the gospel. He, and he's uh, an apostle to the Gentiles. That's what he knows. Right. And he has a dream of a man in Macedonia. Yeah. And and so he knows I have to go there. So there are things like there's specific revelation that comes along the way. And I think that if you just get out and you just honestly just be a Christian, just live mm -hmm. that life, then there are going to be opportunities that arise. When those opportunities arise, take them. And then... God opens the next door and the next, and like, yeah. like you're talking about, just it, that's what living for the Lord is all about. Is yeah. Day by day faith. We, we don't get the roadmap. It just, and there's so much scripture to talk that you can draw from that illustrates that what was it the, the widow and her son would go and check the, the barrel and there'd be just enough for that day, mm -hmm. but it stayed and it was 
it was provision and it's yeah. constant and so well, it's almost like god gives the the map and the details to the one who's got his climbing gear on right and he's starting up the hiking trail as opposed to dropping a map in the lap of someone on a a, a, a beach somewhere in a in a, a hammock who's waiting on the lord right who's waiting on god right. to do something so he can get going I, I think god looks down and sees the guy that says okay not real sure where we're going here, but I know you said go, right? Yeah. Like like Abraham going up the mountain with Isaac, his son, right? Yeah. The Lord will the Lord provide. Will provide. We, he'd said to go, so here we go. And I think we already have the yeah. command and the instruction to go. So when God looks at people who are going, that are, are active where they are, it, you know, there's a lot of people who say, have this mentality that, when this happens or when that happens right. or when I get this blessing, I'm really going to do something. Mm. No, no, you're not. Mm. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I hope you will, but not if you're not doing something. He, he that is faithful with a little will become, you know, mm. given a lot. And, and to he that hath shall be given. Right. And so it's like saying, well, once if I was a millionaire, man, I would give and I'd be generous. But right now you got a thousand dollars and you wouldn't give to anybody to save your life and so reminds me of that old story of uh I know it's yeah. no, no, that's a great story though yeah, it's, it's <laughs> who, who was it i think it was not lum and abner i think it was uh one of the old time radio uh shows um uh maybe it was amos and Ian, whoever it was there the the two gentlemen who would sit on the on the front porch of the general store and talk with one another and so one friend says to the other one he says Hey, if you had a million dollars, he said, uh, would would you would you give it to me? And his friend said, Yeah, man. He said, You're my friend. If I had a million dollars, I'd give it to you. He said, What What about if you had a new a new truck? Would you give me a new truck? And he said, Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd give you a new truck, man. You're my friend. He said, Oh, he said, Well, what about if you had a pig? <laughs> and the guy stopped. He said, Hold on, just a second. He said, You know, I got a pig. You know, I got a pig. <laughs> And so, so the point was, uh, if you ain't going to give your pig, you probably not going to give your truck. You probably not going to give a million dollars. If you're not going to tithe or give, and I'm not saying anything about a commandment of giving. I'm saying giving out a free heart. But if you're not going to give and be generous when you have right. a little bit, you won't when you have a lot. Because it's not the amount of what you have that determines uh, what you give. It's the heart. And so the heart of a giver, you got the widow who just gave two right. nights, you know, but Jesus said gave more than all because her heart was there. So you're not going to suddenly become a faithful uh, servant of the Lord and sharing the gospel and, and reaching the world for Jesus when this happens or when that happens, right. if you're not already doing it in the place you are. So you always have a call on your life to be working for the Lord, regardless of where he has placed you. Yeah. And you'll find, I, I think, you'll find it to be true that if you step out, and it might feel like you're taking the step, you'd be like, man, all right, well, this individual here, and you step out and you just start, you just start doing it, yeah. and then you realize when you look back on it after the fact, oh my goodness, that would have never happened if this hadn't happened, and I wouldn't have been here if I right. hadn't have done this. It's and momentum, you, man. And it's, then you start thinking, wow, that every step of this was ordered. Yeah. And, and Yeah. Think of it in terms of business or sales. Okay. Um, great opportunities come because you had activity. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're a salesperson mm -hmm. and you're sitting in the office waiting on people to call you. <laughs> right. But but when you say, you know what, I don't know whether it'll be a, a success or a failure today. But I tell you one thing, right. I'm going to put in some good activity. And, and in fact, sales people in business will tell you it's numbers, man, that they actually have the numbers for this. They have their metrics on how much activity it takes to get certain goals. And mm -hmm. if you want, um, you know, to make a certain amount of money, you're going to need to make, you know, so many uh, phone calls, so many in-person visits, so many of these things you're going to need to do. What they're telling you is you're going to have to get out there and get active. Right. And then look, as they call it, opportunity. It's going to come your way because you were preparing and doing the things you couldn't being faithful in the waiting. I think one of the worst things we can ever do is think that waiting on the Lord is sitting on our backsides still. and doing nothing. 
It's never doing right. that. You're always in action, in motion. You're always uh, a servant of the Lord. You know, I might be doing a window job. We might be doing a, an exterior cleaning, a power washing, gutter cleaning, gutter guards, Christmas lights, whatever mm -hmm. that we're doing because we do a lot of different things in our business. That may be the reason we're there, but I can't tell you the number of times it's opened up into a prayer time right. with that person or an opportunity to share the gospel, to lead someone to the Lord, uh, because you're always, always in momentum. And, and when you are, I, I really feel like to he that hath, more will be given. Uh, and more is not always measured the way that we look at it, by the right. way. We, we begin to measure against one another, and the Bible says that's completely unwise. You might have, now this is kind of a sidebar, but you might have Philip who's preaching a revival in Samaria that looks like it's going so great mm -hmm. and so huge, and suddenly the Lord transfers him into the desert, right? not a beautiful place, to preach to one guy. Mm -hmm. Which one looks more successful? Well, Samaria does. But in the long run, if you look at church history and see that Ethiopia yeah. has had a witness of Christianity going all the way mm -hmm. back to that Ethiopian eunuch, yeah. then the, the great success was actually beyond Philip's life. He would not even see all that happened right. as a result of that. So when we think, oh, I was successful, I built a church of a thousand, you know, or I built a church of 5,000, or we did this or that. No, you might have been even more successful in the long scheme of things by witnessing to that one person at McDonald's. Yeah. So uh, I think we don't need to get lost in the God has this great thing for me. God has a great thing for you right now. It's called sharing the gospel. Yeah. yeah. It's always a great thing. It's, there is no great and, you know, great and little, uh, big and little or, or great and, and just mundane uh, in the kingdom of God, everything that happens, we never know the magnitude of what God's doing. So even if you're in that place of, man, I don't feel like much is happening in, in my life right mm -hmm. now. I don't have much success. Just ask yourself, are you being faithful and are you walking? Yeah. Walking every day. It's just a day by day walk and you can't take the next step un until, I mean, the, 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 the upcoming steps until you take the next step yeah. which is the next right thing what's the next right thing we need to do and uh if you're willing to do that yeah. god's willing to bless you in ways that will absolutely astound you um i've i've just i've walked it um i am walking it and it amazes me sometimes what god just causes to unfold and right. the cool thing is is you have to step back and go wow god yeah. you're amazing because I didn't have the plan. I didn't know that was going to happen. Right. Like, whoa, it just out of nowhere. It seems like, you know, God, but it wasn't out of nowhere. Right. It was all a part of the plan that he unfolded as you went. But I don't, I mean, we can get into the why, like, why does God not go ahead and tell us everything, all the, all the points. And I think we alluded to it earlier. I do think yeah. that with too much, uh, for knowledge with, with too much understanding, we would try to direct the outcomes yeah. and we would take it out of God's hands and put it in our own. I, I think there's an interesting passage um, that's related to, to that. Uh, Genesis 12 uh, is, is with, uh, it's Abraham. So he's been promised that this is, this is following the promise of the, uh, this inheritance, this promised land, this nation, he's been given this, um, this promise. And he has a moment between him and, and Lot where he, the, the, the land is, you know, not enough for them to both have their, you know, Lot's got his men and his cattle and his, you know, his whole posse, I guess. I don't know what to call it, but his, his outfit. And you got Abram, and they can't stay in the same land together, so they decide they're going to part ways. And Abram looks at Lot and says, "Well, there's two options here. There's this land that is uh, looks rich and plentiful, and um, there's you know it would be looks like very fruitful land, and then there's this dry, arid desert land where it doesn't look like there's any any pathway for success or prosperity." Um, and to think that 
Abram, at this moment, has been promised that he would be the father of many nations. He's been promised pros- prosperity. He's been promised by God that this would that he would have this you know this promised land. And it, you could have like honestly, if I was in that situation and I've already been given this promise, and then there's an opportunity before me to choose the land, I would have thought, well, okay, I'll take it. That's that's obvious. That's obviously what God has called here. But the humility, um, that's what I love about that, is you see the humility and the faith of Abraham mm-hmm. to say, I want what's best for Lot. So you you take the first choice. What What do you think is best for you? And I'll take the arid desert land uh, because I know God's promised me mm-hmm. what God's promised me. Right. And he's going to he's going to fulfill his promise. So take your first pick. I'm not going to take it into my own hands. And I think that a lot of times the temptation is definitely there to take yeah. it into your own hands and to do it, you know, to take control out of God's hands and, and to do it yourself, which is why I, I do think that's probably the reason why we don't get the blueprint. We don't get the and also. I think a lot of times God calls us to things that will terrify us, um, you know, or God might call us to something that's hard. Uh, God doesn't always call us into the easiest of situations or, I mean, I think immediately to um, John the Baptist who's in prison and while John the Baptist is in prison, um, <laughs> He sends word to Jesus. He goes, "Hey, what's going on?" He's like he's in prison here. He says, um, "Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for someone else?" And um, like, well, what gives? Like, John, I've been a faithful. I've been the forerunner. I've been out here um, being a faithful servant. Uh, why am I? right here and are you the one who is truly are you the one who's to come or is there someone else and then jesus responds he sends word back he go tell john uh, and he he quotes from isaiah 62 where he's like the blind receive their sight the lame are healed um the cat uh, but he but he doesn't end the quote he leaves off the part that says and the captives are set free i'm not i'm not trying to read into that and say that that he meant something by that, but it almost feels as if Jesus is telling him, and you are to remain where you are, where you are. Mm-hmm. What if, what if your plan is to stay here? Mm-hmm. And we know that he ends up getting beheaded. Um, so I'm not trying to, I don't want to make this a real dark episode, but, right. but sometimes God calls us to live out a story that is not pleasant, but it brings glory to him. And it also, um, uh, is beneficial in the spread of the gospel. I, I, so I don't know. I just, I wanted to say, we're not given a promise. (laughs) We're not given a promise. What is that old crab family song? He never promised that the the cross would not get heavy. Cross would not get heavy or the hill would not not be hard to climb. climb. Yeah. Yeah. He never offered the victory without Uh, without fighting. fighting. Said help Help will will always come come in time. time. Right. And that's, that's the truth. It's, uh, he he doesn't call us always to the easiest of places. No, I think that in the struggle um, is where we really see him. Yeah. Um, because in the easy times, it's really easy to see ourselves. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to get self-absorbed, self-focused. But in the struggle, in the times when we realize we're inadequate, that we need him, uh, for whatever reason is in our human nature, that's when we tend to really dig in is when we we tend to really grow and i think god uses struggle to strengthen us yeah and uh the process the walk of faith is um it is a uh you know it's a walk uh, yeah. but it's worth it and you will grow immensely uh, throughout the process I, if i can tell one little thing i we're probably getting close to needing to to sign off for today um about four minutes away from when i have to send out work list to mm-hmm to our, our guys and get rolling but uh i was planting a tree mm. and um i said to my brother-in-law uh, what i was planning to do and he he had been involved with 
those things and knew more about it than me. And so I told him a process, dig the hole out twice the size of the root ball, how, what, how I was going to prepare the soil, what I was putting in, plant it. And then after I get it planted, I, that I would put a P post in, you know, either, either side of it and use some, some uh, things to tie it off. And uh, he cautioned me during that part of it. He said, when you tie it off, be sure to leave some space on the cable on each side of the, the pole so that it's not tight. You got to give the tree room to be moved and to be blown about because if it doesn't have room to move and for the wind to blow it and for the opposition to come, it won't put down a healthy root system. Right. If you actually just stabilize it and hold it, it will kind of root in, but it won't root deep. But when the wind and the pressure comes against it, it will root deep. And I think that this walk of faith will be one of the greatest ways for you as you people watching uh, walk into your your walk, which is different from my walk. And you, you accept the challenge to give God the momentum so he can give direction. When you do that, you're going to find that roots, man, you'll begin to get more rooted in faith and more rooted in your walk with God, more rooted in everything because of the opposition that will come. Don't expect the walk of faith to be easy. Right. Don't expect it to be just a, a walk in the park. I mean, it's not a walk in the park. I mean, it's more like a, a trek up a mountain. You know, it's like right. a, like you're going to climb. and you go, but, but, man, you know, I like to hike. And generally, my wife and I hike uh, a good number of miles every weekend. And one of the payoffs of hiking is the mountaintop. It's right. the top of the hill. It's that scenic overlook. It's that moment when you go, boy, that was worth the climb. Yeah. And that's where you're headed is you're going to have those moments when you can finally breathe deep. You can take a break and you go, huh, that was worth the climb. What right. a journey, Lord. There were some bears that jumped out along the way. There there was some some people that we didn't understand. There was some fights we had to get in. Uh, but, man, we finally got to the top, the top of this thing, and it's been worth it all. Yeah. I would say my message to the people who are watching this is um, – it's a straightforward message today, and it's a message not just to you, but it's to me. And and that message is um, to trust God. I mean, it's very simple. Yeah. And to get to get going, don't don't sit around just waiting for the uh, the instructions to come, but uh, but get out and actually um, do the work. So. I'm going to go ahead because it looks like not only is it time to send out the work list. Time to send it out. It's also Here time. Here we go. It's also, Ready. It's also Boom. time for my computer to die. First work list of many sent. Right. But anyway, um, yeah, and I enjoyed this conversation today. If you're if you're watching this to the end, um, wow, we appreciate you for watching it. Walk in end. faith, man. Walk yes. in faith. Go. Go. Get out and go. Yeah, go. I mean, go in prayer. Don't go on your own. Don't go without him. Right. I think the important thing is that we want to run, but we don't want to run ahead. Yeah. Because running ahead will get weary because the Bible talks about in Isaiah 40. You remember again, they will run and not grow weary. It says in the verses before that about the young men who would run. Mm -hmm. and it's talking about young men who have strength and right. they would run, but they would grow exhausted. But he said they that wait upon the Lord. They'll be able to right. run with strength. It's because we don't want to run ahead. We want to run with him. But he is going to come alongside those who are willing to go. Yes, sir. Boy, yes. this was good. Yes. I enjoyed this. I did. I hope you all did. Yes, I hope you did too. Like, subscribe. Yep. We'll see you in the next one.